Do what? I'll give you a stick. I mean, I wish I could give you a stick. Okay, so uh, my question was, like, what is Big Data and uh, what companies specialize in it? So first off, what is Gig Theatre? <laughs> okay, uh, Gig Theatre is basically a play that is uh, that uses songs to enhance the storyline, to make it a bit more fun, and just to like tell the story through lyrics and like songwriting things like that. Um, so there was also a journalist called Elena Trojanova, I want to say, uh, who believes it is the greatest theatrical discovery of the twenty first century and it deserves a special place in every theatre lover's heart. Clearly she loves it. Um, but then it's apparently sweeping across like amateur, oh no, not amateur, but like smaller companies that like tour. Um, so it's a new trend and it brings a unique uh, aspect to the theatre world. And then what is the difference between musicals and gig theatre? Um, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, so musicals are like have more complex dancey like songs, uh, where as gig theatre have like more duologues and monologues and a lot more uh, speaking parts. Uh, so theatre companies that do gig theatre are Burnt Lemon Theatre Company, Middle Child Theatre. Uh, there was a play, uh, yeah called Marry the Gig Theatre Show at the Bedlam Theatre and then Emma Blackman Productions uh, did a show called Sugarcoat at South Park Playhouse and Edward Fringe have loads of gig theatre shows. Uh, so Burnt Lemon. Uh, Burnt Lemon is a female-led company. It was formed in 2017 by Cara Baldwin, Baldwin? Baldwin <laughs> and Hannah Bentman and they met at East 15 in London uh, where they did a theatrical course and that course helped them to uh, create their first show which was a show called uh, The Half Moon Shania. don't know if I'm pronouncing that right but oh well uh, but they won a load of awards so they won the I'm not going to say that uh, <laughs> the Step Ladder Award and the New Diorama and Underbelly's Untapped Award for their Edinburgh Fringe show Tokyo Rose um, it's a bit about the Burnt Lemon Theatre. So, should I? This is a trailer for TV Rooms. So it's definitely very singing and very loud, maybe. Very good. Uh, yeah. uh, so we're going to move on to Middle Child Theatre. Uh, it's a theatre that makes noise, it says on their website. So hoping it does that. Um, so they do, they create their own shows, they create original text and uh, with original script, write, songwriting, and bold new writing apparently, uh, to, so, so that they believe that it makes sense to the modern world. Um, they are very strong on trying to break barriers of the, of the theatre and want to go above and beyond to the audience expectations of what of what theatre is. Um, they're very strong on that. Uh, so they won 
a couple of awards actually, they made awards. Uh, so they won the George, award, George Devine Award in 2020 and Writers Guild Award uh, for the best play and young for young audiences, also in 2020. For The Canary and the Crow, that show was in 2019. And then they won Stage Excellence Award, uh, Broadway Bobby Award, and the 730 Best of the Best Award. For the All We Ever Wanted Was Everything in 2017. Uh, it's another highlights, I'm not gonna make you watch it all. Two, one, two. Mm -hmm. Not what you think, just is not. Mm -hmm. Why not think this is what? Trust what I say, what I got in my heart is the truth, it's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot. I can't get it out. It's shame it out like a gift for me. Okay, so as you can see there, it's very different to Burton Island Theatre, uh, which means the theatre can be very varied in the music styles. So yeah, carry on. Uh, this is uh, Mary, a good theatre show. It's about Mary, Queen of Scots. Um, it's, it's got a live band in it full of um, actor musicians. Um, they've got an Instagram, Mary underscore good theatre. Love that. Uh, so the writer lead, Rhoda Johnson, and the director, Katie Slater, started creating the show in 2022. Um, and it aired in 2023, I think it was. Uh, the the band, which is five actor musicians, all devised it in the working in the working space. Um, so they devised the band arrangements and the music. Uh, but the show dives into the emotional impact and major events that Mary had to endure. Uh, so it basically is inspired by it's inspiring to the audience to reflect on this on the discriminatory challenges that Mary had to had to face and how it can resonate to nowadays. Um, and then um, it's really clever how they did this. Uh, the show starts and ends with a line of women to show like how their how like their strength and their uni unity they share. So, what another clip? Yeah. We need to start wrapping up. I'm gonna actually gonna skip this one. Uh, how can this happen on rehearsals? Uh, so this one, the vibes. The our show, it's very gig theatre. It's got a lot of dialogues, dialogues, duologues, and monologues, and lots of songs. Uh, the music is. Like we're very electric, so it, that's a part of gig theatre, and uh, it can help by all of us understanding what gig theatre is. Uh, question: yeah. uh, What kind of work do you think specifically fits like gig? Theater? Like why? Why would you move to the theatre over another? Like, what, why choose that form? Like, why, why do you think writers want to make it in this form over doing it as a naturalistic piece? Or? I think it brings something different to the, the theatre world instead of like musicals or straight plays. It brings in like more information, like in the in the dialogue and in the songs. So it brings an aspect of like entertainment in the songs and an aspect of like your acting in the dialogue. Okay, great. Yeah. Do you prefer the music? Musicals. I'm a big musical girl. Uh, I prefer dancing over the songs. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Thank you so much, Emily.